essentially what we want to do is we want to maximize our utility, so maximize u1 and u2, and what we get to pick is, is the amount of each good we're, we're going to consume, and it's subject to our budget constraint. This is, this is essentially the problem we're facing. And we can think of a couple of methods from calculus to solve for this maximization. So there's two ways. First is going to be to reframe it as an unconstrained maximization problem. And the second method is going to be the Lagrangian. So let's look at each of them independently and then we're going to apply um, all of these methods to the, to the Cobb-Douglas uh, utility function. All right, so let's talk about this first method first. And so we want to solve um, for the constraint for one variable in terms of the other. In terms of the other. So maybe I'll put a little line here to indicate these are the two methods, and now we're starting this for first method. Um, and then we sub this constraint into the objective function. So I mean, this is the objective function, right? This is what we're trying to maximize. This is our constraint. So basically, we want to like solve for this constraint in terms of, let's say, x2 as a function of x1, and then plug that into this for x2, and that's basically like an unconstrained maximization hole where we're picking x1. And the x1 we, we pick implies some level of x2. All right, so we kind of, we've done this algebra before, so I'm gonna call this equation three since I think we've used a one and a two already. So x2 as a function of x1 is m over p2 minus p1 over p2 times x1. And that's just the same line that, that we drew before. We're just rearranging this budget constraint. Right, I'm moving um, p1, x1 to the right-hand side, so I'm subtracting it from both sides, and I'm dividing both sides by p2, and, and that's why I get this. So x2 is a function of, of x1. And now what we want to do is max u of x1, and then this is, we're going to sub this in for x2 here, m over p2 minus p1 over p2 x1. We want to max this, and we get to pick x1. So this is just an now there's no constraint, right? It's like we took the constraint and we put it in to our objective function. And so now it's an unconstrained problem. Well, now we hopefully have an idea of how to solve this unconstrained problem. We want to take the derivative of, of this with respect to x1 and set it to e, and set it equal to zero. And we can solve. Essentially what we want to do is we want to maximize our utility to maximize u1 and u2, and what we get to pick is, is the amount of each good we're, we're going to consume, and it's subject to our budget constraint. This is, this is essentially the problem we're facing. And we can think of a couple of methods from calculus to solve for this maximization. So there's two ways. First is going to be to reframe it as an unconstrained maximization problem. And the second method is going to be the Lagrangian. 
So let's look at each of them independently, and then we're going to apply um, all of these methods to the, to the Cobb Douglas uh, utility function. All right, so let's talk about this first method first. And so we want to solve. Um, for the constraint for one variable in terms of the other. In terms of the other. So maybe I'll put a little line here to indicate these are the two methods, and now we're starting this for first method. Um, and then we sub this constraint into the objective function. So I mean, this is the objective function, right? This is what we're trying to maximize. This is our constraint. So basically, we want to like solve for this constraint in terms, of, let's say, x2 as a function of x1, and then plug that into this for x2. And that's basically like an unconstrained maximization hole where we're picking x1. And the x1 we, we pick implies some level of x2. All right. So we kind of, we've done this algebra before. So I'm going to call this equation 3 since I think we've used a 1 and a 2 already. So x2 as a function of x1 is m over p2 minus p1 over p2 times x1. And that's just the same line that, that we drew before. We're just rearranging this budget constraint. Right? I'm moving um, p1, x1 to the right-hand side. So I'm subtracting it from both sides. And I'm dividing both sides by p2. And, and that's why I get this. So x2 is a function of, of x1. And now what we want to do is max u of x1, and then this is we're going to sub this in for x2 here, m over p2 minus p1 over p2 x1. We want to max this, and we get to pick x1. So this is just, now there's no constraint, right? It's like we took the constraint and we put it in to our objective function. And so now it's an unconstrained problem. Well, now we hopefully have an idea of how to solve this unconstrained problem. We want to take the derivative of, of this with respect to x1 and set it to e, and set it equal to 0. And we can solve. The utility function of x1, so the utility function is a function of x1, and then we plugged in what x2 was in terms of x1. So we had m over p2 minus p1 over p2 times x1. And we got to pick x1. And so we want to differentiate this with respect to x1 and set it equal to 0. All right, so let's do that derivative. So the derivative of, of this utility function with respect to x1. So that's how it's changing. This first part is changing. But then we also have this second part changing, so plus the partial of x1 and x2, which is a function of x1, with respect to x2, and then times dx2 over dx1 equals 0. So setting it equal to 0 to get the max. Let's just break down these little. So this is like the direct effect of uh, increasing or changing x1 on utility. So we increase x1 a bit. This is the effect on this utility function or on utility. This is basically the rate of increase in utility um, as x2 increases, or essentially for increasing x1, then the amount of, and we're still sticking to our sub, or we're still subject to our budget constraint, the amount of x2 is actually going down. I mean, 
or sorry, this is the effect of, of, of increasing X2 on our utility. And what this is actually is like the rate at which X2 changes as X1 increases to satisfy budget, to satisfy the budget. So let's go through that one more time just to, just to make sure that's clear. So this first part is like the direct effect of increasing the amount of good one on your utility. The second term is the amount, the increase in utility we get from increasing the amount of good two. And then we're multiplying the second, you know, the second partial derivative is multiplied by the rate at which x2 changes as x1 increases to make sure we still satisfy that budget constraint. So if like we're increasing um, x1 a bit, we have this positive increase from increasing x1, but x2 has to go down, so we're losing part of that. We're also losing some utility from having to decrease the amount of good two to increase good one. So we're figuring when that equals zero. We know what this is. We know that this is actually P1 over P2, or negative P1 over P2. We know what that change is. So dx2 over dx1 is, is actually just this price ratio. And so essentially we could rewrite this as the partial derivative of this utility function at x1 star, x2 star, so it's the optimal amount over the partial of this utility function, x1 star, x2 star, with respect to x2, and that equals um, this price ratio. We can get that by just rearranging this, right? We can move this over and divide both sides by, um, by this, the partial of this, right? And we get the partial of the utility function with respect to x1 over the partial utility function with respect to x2 over, um, sorry, equals this price ratio. And this negative sign, you know, changes to a positive as we move it over. So that's why it's, it's positive on both sides. This is what we got before. We had before. You know, this MRS, marginal rate of substitution, equals this price ratio. We just did it in a different way. So hopefully that kind of made sense.